The Middle East is witnessing dramatic changes in the past few months. Turkey is becoming closer to Israel, Syria is increasingly improving its relations with the United Arab Emirates, Russia isn't happy with Israel's support to Ukraine, Assad expressing hope in Mohammed bin Salman who stopped funding the terrorists in Syria starting from 2018 and says to his guests from Mauritania last week that when Saudi Arabia gets rid of American pressures, relations may be restored with Riyadh. But all these changes do not come without risks, especially with the increased Israeli bombardment of Syria and Erdogan's plan, who he mentioned yesterday or declared yesterday, to conquer more Syrian lands 30 kilometers in depth in Syria in the north to create what Erdogan calls safe zones, which basically are zones to send millions of Syrian refugees from Turkey to Syria and create zones of influence for Turkey or even permanently occupying these areas like Turkey did with Liwa al iskandaron area. This is in the north. In the south, Israel accelerated its aggressions on Syria to achieve a few goals. The first goal is to create an atmosphere of dissatisfaction, anger among the Syrians by these increasing, increased airstrikes in Syria in order to urge the people to ask the Syrian government to strike some sort of a deal with Israel instead of continue fighting on the basis of a just peace, a state for the Palestinians and the return of the Palestinian refugees to Palestine again. So with these strikes, the people are asking because of the dire economic situation, some people may ask, why are we fighting Israel? This is what Israel hopes for. Therefore, they're increasing these attacks on Syrian territories and increasingly killing more people, more soldiers, so that the people get angry on the Syrian government and tell them, let's strike a deal. This is what Israel's hopes for. Is it happening in Syria? I think a very minority of the people are saying this, but the majority of the people are very much ideologically, emotionally, and on patriotic sense are attached to the uh, Syrian army. This is my observation of what I see on social media because uh, what I follow every day on social media and the comments, hundreds of comments there. So I can see the sentiments. If Israel is betting on this, I think it's a lost bet. They're not, they're not gonna be able to uh, urge the people to rise against the government in order to force the government, let's say, to strike a deal with Israel. The peace that Israel wants from Syria is for Assad to make major and big concessions to Israel. And on the other hand, Israel is going to make a cosmetic, let's say, concessions uh, to Syria. The second goal that Israel is aiming for in Syria is to destroy the air defense systems. In the past few weeks, Israel destroyed multiple Panzer S-1 Russian air defense systems operated by Syrian army officers and multiple Syrian army officers, including generals, died because of these strikes. So what Israel is doing, basically, they shoot multiple missiles in different locations and they wait for these Panzer S-1s to respond and to intercept the Israeli missiles. And they know, like, this Panzer S-1, for example, can shoot 10 missiles, let's say. I'm not sure about the numbers, I'm just giving examples. So when the 10 missiles are over and there is a time for reloading, Israel comes and strikes this Panzer S-1. And I think at least six officers died in the past month, let's say four weeks, because of these strikes on Panzer S-1. Now, some people will, will ask me, of course, about the S-300, and I received this question, every day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, elsewhere. This is a $1 million question, and I think the answer for this question is only we can get it from Assad or from Putin. I don't think anyone else has a concrete answer, but there are two theories. The first is Russia is practicing pressure or pressuring Syria not to use the S-300s now because they want to keep a certain level of or they want to keep the rules of engagement as it is in the region between Syria and Israel. They don't want further escalation and deterioration of the security situation in Syria because maybe from the Russian perspective, if Syria uses S-300 against the F-16s, then Israel will start using the F-35 and then Syria has to ask for S-400. So there will be more escalation and escalation and escalation. Maybe I'm saying this is from the Russian point of view. 
From the Syrian side, maybe again, Syrians could be waiting for the zero hour because historically when you study the, the conflict between Syria and Israel, you will see that after every major war between Syria and Israel, Syria always kept some of its weaponry secret from Israel. They didn't use everything. Of course, Israel knows Syria has S-300s, but do they know the locations of the S-300s? That's the question. I don't think so. So if Syria uses now the S-300 against uh, such Israeli targets that are firing missiles, whether from the Golan Heights or from the regional waters on Syria, then Israel may uh, discover the locations of the S-300s, right? So they keep it for the zero hour if there is a major war, not a limited strikes. This is just a theory. The third goal that Israel is trying to achieve is to destroy Iranian and Hezbollah assets or cargoes. First of all, Iranian forces in Syria are very few. They are just advisors. They are not fighting combats. They, they are not fighting underground. Hezbollah, between 2012 and 2018, they had between 5,000 to 20,000 fighters. I think the numbers are very minimum nowadays in Syria because Syria doesn't need a big uh, forces from Lebanon or elsewhere. The 70% is uh, geographically in the hands of the Syrian government. There are, of course, the Idlib, northern Aleppo, Azaz, Afrin, and other areas are still occupied. But because there is no plans now for a major offensive or an attack, so there is very few, again, Hezbollah fighters in Syria. But still, some of the Hezbollah uh, officers or fighters, or call them whatever you want, they may be trying to um, deliver weapons from Syria to Lebanon. That's when Israel also tries to strike these cargoes. Now, in the light of this uh, developments, Assad paid an official visit to Iran two weeks ago. And according to a senior political analyst, Abdelbari Atwan, the visit can be summarized into following five points. First, it coincided with the start of the largest Israeli military maneuvers of its kind near the Syrian and Lebanese borders, amid reports and rumors of preparations to launch a major war against the axis of resistance, as he calls, especially Syria, Iran, and Hezbollah. Tel Aviv is in the grips of terror due to the escalation of the strength of the Axis, Israel's failure to impact Vienna negotiations, and Iran's closeness to acquiring nuclear weapons capabilities. Second, in his speech on the International Quds Day, April 29th, the Secretary General of the Lebanese Hezbollah Said Hassan Nasrallah affirmed that Iran and its resistance alliance will retaliate against any Israeli aggression in Syria. He stressed that the notion of a response in the right time and place has gone irreversibly, which requires Syrian-Iranian coordination at highest levels in preparation for an upcoming confrontation on Syrian soil that may turn into an all-out war. Third, Lebanon is about to enter a critical and sensitive stage beginning on 15 May, with the holding of parliamentary elections that are neck deep in foreign interference, especially from the United States, France, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. The results of these elections may lead to political and military confrontations if they do not conform to the calculations of some internal parties and their supporters abroad. Fourth, after the Russian military operation in Ukraine commenced, the Arab region has witnessed new political and military rules of engagement, which may lead to a dramatic change in regional and international alliances. Recently, we witnessed an Egyptian, Saudi, and Emirati rapprochement with Russia, and the sharp rise in their tensions with their historic American ally, after the Arab states rejected Washington's request to increase gas and oil production to lower prices and replace the disruption of Russian energy sources. To Europe. Now, in your opinion, are we going to witness a major Israeli escalation in the region? And if this happened, will Turkey put its hands in the hands of Israel in order to sandwich Syria? Let me know your opinion in the comments below. I've been your host, Georg Almasian of Syriana Analysis. If you like my analysis, please hit the subscribe button and like this video. It really helps me with the algorithm of YouTube. And if you want to support my work, you can become a patron, link in the description below and see you next time.